Hello again. This time I decided to do a, a totally unscripted video. Uh, usually I do a lot of notes and follow a script. But this time, um, last video, we studied the Jacob Israel paradigm. And we went through some scriptures in the Bible about the difference between Jacob and Israel. And this video, for the second part, I thought I would just read through the Bible during the life of Jacob, since the time he was named Israel, to take a look at where his name switches back and forth and see if we can read into it what we've learned about Jacob and Israel. Israel being the transformed man who maybe not necessarily transformed, but the one who wrestles with God, the one who has the Holy Spirit within himself that is in this wrestling match of doing things God's way or doing things your own way. And the, as opposed to Jacob being the man before he received the Holy Spirit, before he accepted uh, God into his life, to rule over his life. So it's, it's uh, Jacob is the man who has reverted back to being his old self. Israel is the man who is conquering and becoming a new self. So this is sort of the way I've been reading it. So let's uh, continue with our Bible study. And as I've mentioned before I used the King James Bible version for a few different reasons the main one being that it's public domain there is no copyright on it I can read the whole book online with every right to do so so um, there's the first reason is public domain and um, it is an old language o older English uh, Contrary to what most people believe, the British didn't actually talk this way in 1611 when this translation came out. This almost Shakespearean style of English was um, actually invented for this translation. Um, they, they just uh, used the English language in the most powerful way they could to make a more accurate translation of the ancient Hebrew and Greek languages. That's why you'll find the thee, thy, and thou. That's King James English. Um, that's the difference between uh, you and ye. When you say ye, Y-E, ye, you're talking to one person. When you say you, you're talking to more than one person. And thee and thine. And uh, thee and thou, and these are these are plural and singular words. So it lends to the translation better. And then there are some older terms like uh, uh, four score. A score is twenty. So four score is eighty. Three score is sixty. Things like that. Um, there's not. It's not really that difficult to learn, and it it, it does expand your mind somewhat. Um, y y I find it to be. I, I was into studying translations quite a bit. I find it to be very accurate, um, although there are some problems with it because the a few different reasons because there were a few different teams working on different parts of the book all at the same time. And so they used different words in the translation. That's why you'll find names spelt differently or different uh, name English names being used because they translated it differently through the different groups. You just have to understand that this was a groundbreaking work when it was done. So there are some problems with it like that. Uh, but the bigger problems are the, uh, the, new, the newer translations that came out after this. 
are counter-reformation translations, and there's some serious problems with those that uh, maybe we can discuss in a later video. So I like this one. It's, it's very good. I, I don't say that you cannot be saved with the newer ones, uh, but I would call them inferior to this, personally. But anyway, so you, I, I, I find that I kind of enjoy the King James language. There's a lot of uh, endearing phrases from it. And uh, it is what it is. So let's get started on Jacob in Israel. <clears throat> do, 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 do. Okay, we're going to start with the part where Jacob wrestles with an angel. <clears throat> because this is the first place where he is where the name Israel comes up. And uh, this is where he had left his homeland because he had taken the blessing away from his brother Izu. And Izu was planning to kill him. And his mother, Re uh, Rebecca, the his mother, Rebecca, arranged to have him leave and go to the 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 land of her father to find a wife from her family. So he ended up going there and actually finding two wives, the two sisters, Rachel and Leah, and he ended up having. Uh, 11 children with them and and Rachel was pregnant when they left so he's on his way home and now he hears that Izu is coming to meet him with an army of 700 men so he has only his family and some servants so he becomes very afraid and uh, he sent his family ahead group by group each wife or each mother with their children first the the slave women or the concubines and then the the wives each in turn thinking that izu would not kill them because they were smaller groups and he would eventually see by the time he got to jacob he would be more uh, his heart would be softened more. So Jacob put forth this plan and uh, then he sent all these groups ahead of him and then he stayed behind and nightfall came and a man came to wrestle with Jacob in the dark. Now, this man turned out to be God. Um, now, why would God come up to his... his to Jacob in the dark to wrestle with him because he became his fear. Izu was his greatest fear. He was afraid his brother was going to kill him. So I, I imagine Jacob at first thought it was Izu that jumped him in the dark. So God is, is bringing up Jacob's greatest fear here is he to overcome his fear of Izu. So let's read the, the scripture here first. Now you can follow along with your own Bible. I'm not going to go through posting tons of scripture like this. I'm going to be reading through it fairly quickly. So um, if you want to follow along, you can grab your own Bible and follow along. Or you can just believe that I'm actually reading it. Okay, uh, so I'm starting in Genesis chapter 32, verse 24. And Jacob was left alone, and there wrestled a man with him until the daybreak. 
And when he saw that he prevailed not against him, he touched the hollow of his thigh, and the hollow of Jacob's thigh was out of joint as he wrestled with him. And he said, Let me go, for the day breaks. And he said, I will not let thee go, except thou bless me. And he said unto him, What is thy name? And he said, Jacob. And he said, Thy name shall be called no more Jacob, but Israel. For as a prince hast thou power with God and with men, and has prevailed. And Jacob asked him and said, Tell me, I pray thee, thy name. And he said, Wherefore is it that thou dost ask after my name? And he blessed him there. So it's like, you think you could bless me? <laughs> and Jacob called the name of the place Peniel. For I have seen God face to face, and my life is preserved. And as he passed over Penuel, the sun rose upon him, and he halted upon his thigh. So, um, there he overcame his fear, his fear of his zoo. And he, he prevailed because he said, I will not let go of you until you bless me. Because his zoo had been cursing him for years. So, uh, Izu had been cursing him for years. So I imagine that Jacob thought it was Izu. And he says, I'm not going to let you go until you bless me. Because that way I know that you're not going to try to kill me, I guess. And it was actually God. God be being his fear. And he blessed him. And the name Jacob, as we know, means usurper. And he renamed him Israel, which means a prince, an overcomer. And then he limps, which I think um, is describing the struggle between the Spirit of God and the Spirit of man within a man when you receive the Holy Spirit. And Israel is like a, a man who has received the Holy Spirit. Or, or the the purified man after the Holy Spirit is finished with him. And Jacob is the unpurified man. So the two are in the one person wrestling, but Israel is constantly winning bit by bit in the, uh, the Christian walk. So the next part we will look at is there's more things that happen. I'm not going to go through it all. Uh, Jacob does meet Izu, and Izu goes on ahead, and Jacob stays behind. And then um, there's the, the avengement of Dinah, Jacob's daughter who was raped, and they avenged her with the uh, killing the town of Shechem. Shechem. And then uh, Jacob is told by God to go to Bethel, where he met him, on his way out of the land of, Can land of Canaan when he was going to meet his in-laws. So, um, so he goes back to Bethel. And this is chapter 35, starting in verse 1. And God said to Jacob, Arise, go up to Bethel and dwell there, and make there an altar unto God that appeared to thee when thou fled from the face of Izu thy brother. And Jacob said to his household and to all that were with him, Put away the strange gods that are among you, and be clean and change your garments. So they all had idols. They, they weren't um, all the same religion. Jacob was following God, the one who had appeared to him, but all of his family had idols, and the servants had idols. Everyone had their own thing. Uh, but he commands them to put them all away, because we're going to meet my God, and uh, we can't have any idols. Okay, let us arise and go to Beth El. This is where all the people were afraid, because this whole town had just been massacred by the two sons of Jacob, and they're thinking... Now the Canaanites are going to come after us in war, and we're just a little family. We're not an army. So they're afraid, and, and now they're coming under the protection of God. And so they gave Jacob 
Okay, now, so God said, um, so Jacob says, Let us arise and go to Bethel, and I will make there an altar unto my God, who answered me in the day of my distress, and was with me in the way which I went. So he's actually been with me, and he's actually shown me he is powerful. So let's turn to him. So they gave Jacob all the strange gods which were in their hand and all their earrings which were in their ears, and Jacob hid them under the oak which was by Shechem. And they journeyed, and the terror of God was upon the cities that were round about them, and they did not pursue after the sons of Jacob. So Jacob came to Luz, which is in the land of Canaan, that is, Bethel, he and all the people that were with him. And he built there an altar and called the place El Bethel, because there God appeared unto him when he fled from the face of his brother. But Deborah, Rebekah's nurse, died, and she was buried beneath Bethel under an oak, and the name of it was called Alon Bakoth. And God appeared unto Jacob again when he came out of Paddan Aram and blessed him. And God said to him, Thy name is Jacob. Thy name shall not be called any more Jacob, but Israel shall be thy name. And he called his name Israel. So he's reiterating to him, That wasn't Izu, that was me. And God said to him, I am God Almighty. Be fruitful and multiply. A nation and a company of nations shall be of thee, and kings shall come out of thy loins. And the land which I gave Abraham and Isaac to thee I will give it, and to thy seed after thee I will give the land. And God went up from him in the place where he talked with him, and Jacob set up a pillar in the place where he talked with him, even a pillar of stone, and he poured a drink offering thereon, and he poured, poured oil thereon. And Jacob called the name of the place where God spoke with him, Bethel. So, um, <clears throat> now God has reiterated the promises of Abraham and Isaac, not to Jacob, but to Israel. He, did, he, he reiterated to Jacob on his way out of Canaan, and he reiterated it to Israel on his way in, back to Bethel when he came back. Uh, so both of these events happened at Bethel. So now his name is now Israel. Okay. So then Rachel died in labor, giving birth to Benjamin. And, uh, and Jacob set a pillar upon her grave. That is the pillar of Rachel's grave unto this day. And Israel, so here's a switch. Jacob put a pillar upon her grave. He's dealing with death of his loved one. Um, Israel doesn't deal with death. Israel is uh, the spirit of God, lives forever. So Jacob is putting a pillar on the grave and, and burying his kin. And Israel journeyed and spread his tent beyond the tower of Edar. And it came to pass when Israel dwelt in that land that Reuben went and lay with Bilhah, his father's concubine. And Israel heard it. So now the oldest son, Reuben, slept with, Isra with uh, Israel's concubine, one of his w wives, of his other children. And he heard about it. And uh, <clears throat> now if we skip down to chapter 35, verse 27, uh, the death of Isaac. Jacob came to Isaac, his, his father, unto Mamre, unto the city of Arba, which is Hebron, where Abraham and Isaac sojourned. And Isaac gave up the ghost and died, and was gathered to his people, being old and full of days. And his sons Izu and Jacob buried him. So here again he's in another funeral with his family member, and he's Jacob. Okay, uh, let's skip ahead here. Now it talks here a lot about Izu. This, this chapter, the next chapter is all about Izu. And then there's a chapter about Joseph and his dreams. 
the sons of Judah. Uh, Judah's life, his Judah's family, uh, Joseph. Um, okay, now, before we get into that, there's a part where, here it is, where, where the, all the sons got together and put Joseph in the pit, right? And, uh, and then they come back and tell their father about it. So we'll take a look at that. And they took Joseph's coat and killed a kid of the goats and dipped the coat in the blood. And they sent the coat of many colors and they brought it to their father and said, This we have found. Know now whether it be thy son's coat or no. And he knew it and said, It is my son's coat. An evil beast has devoured him. Joseph is without doubt rent in pieces. And Jacob rent his clothes and put sackcloth upon his loins and mourned for his son many days. So now he's Jacob. Again, he's dealing with death again now. His son is dead. And this um, goes on for many days, not just a funeral. Um, so th th this um, tragedy has made him revert back to being Jacob and not overcoming. He, he, it's his weakness now. And uh, the Midianites sold Joseph into Egypt and then... It talks about Judah's life, and then it talks about Joseph in Egypt. Uh, Joseph interprets the dreams, Joseph, uh, Pharaoh's dreams. Um, now his brothers come into Egypt. Um, Joseph imprisons them, calls them spies. He does these things to them. And uh, then... Um, Joseph goes through all the tests with his brother. Okay, now, when they went back to see their father, uh, when uh, Joseph kept Simeon, or Simon, the second oldest, and sent them back to go get Benjamin. So we'll take a look at this here. Uh, and Joseph uh, sent them back to get their younger brother before he would let Simon go. So we start in uh, Genesis chapter 42, verse 34. Bring your youngest brother unto me, then I will know that you are not spies, but that you are true men, so I will deliver you your brother, and you shall traffic in the land. And it came to pass, as they emptied their sacks, that behold, every man's bundle of money was in his sack. And when both they and their father saw the bundles of money, they were afraid. And Jacob their father, so he's still mourning his son Joseph, said to them, Me, you have bereaved of children. Joseph is not, and Simon is not. And you will take Benjamin away. All these things are against me. And Reuben spoke to his father, Reuben, the one who screwed his concubine. Slay, he said, slay my two sons if I bring him not to thee. Deliver him into my hand and I will bring him to thee again. And he said, my son shall not go down with you, for his brother is dead and he is left alone. If mischief befalls him by the way in which you go, then shall you bring down my gray hairs with sorrow to the grave. And the famine was sore in the land, and it came to pass when they had eaten up the corn which they had bought out of Egypt, their father said to them, Go again, buy us food. And then Judah spoke unto him, saying, The man told us, to, he did solemnly protest to us, saying, You shall not see my face except your brothers with you. If thou will send our brother with us, we will go down and buy you food. But if you will not send him, we will not go down. Uh, and Israel said, okay, so now he's standing up for his son now. Israel said, why do you deal so ill with me as to tell the man whether you had a brother? 
And they said, The man asked us straightly of our state and of our kindred, saying, Is your father alive? Have you another brother? And we told him, according to the tenor of these words, Could we certainly know that he would say, Bring your brother down? And Judah said to Israel, his father, Now remember, Judah is the forefather of Jesus Christ. And he's speaking now to Israel. Send the lad with me, and we will arise and go, that we may live and not die, both we and you, and also our little ones. I will be a surety for him. Of my hand you will require him. If I bring him not to thee and set him before thee, then let me bear the blame forever. For except we had lingered, surely now we had returned the second time. And their father Israel said to them, If it must be so now, do this. So now he accepts that, because Judah put his own life up for the whole family, for the sake of the whole family. That's much more righteous than Reuben putting up his children, his own two children. So... Um, so Israel said to them, If it must be so now, do this. Take of the best fruits in the land in your vessels, and carry down the man a present, a little balm, a little honey, spices and mirth, nuts and almonds, and take the double the money in your hand, and the money that was brought again in the mouth of your sacks, carry it again in your hand. Pre-adventure it was an oversight. Also, take your brother and arise and go to the man. So he allowed them to take Benjamin. And God Almighty give you mercy before the man, that he may send away your older brother and Benjamin. If I be bereaved of my children, I am bereaved. So this is now how Israel is speaking. Israel is the overcomer, the strong one. <clears throat> and then they, the, it carries on when they show up in Egypt with Joseph, with Benjamin. Okay, and then uh, Joseph uh, tests them again, and then Joseph uh, breaks down because uh, when Judah, when Joseph took, let Simon go, and then he put the money in their sacks again, testing them again, and then he took Benjamin and said, now you've got to leave and you can't have Benjamin. And then Judah came back and, and said, I put my life up for him, that he wouldn't, that his father will die if he doesn't come home. So he, I will, I, uh, he offered to take his place. And that made Joseph break down and finally reveal who he was. Because now they had passed his test. Because if they continued playing games, then he would have played games on them. But now Judah is not playing games anymore. So Joseph, um, he's letting the test go. It's, they passed. So Joseph could not refrain, refrain himself before all of them that stood by him, and he cried, Cause every man to go out from me. And there stood no man with him while Joseph made himself known to his brothers. And uh, um, we're in chapter 45 now, by the way. Chapter 45, verse 9. And Joseph says, Haste and go up to my father and say to him, Thus says thy son Joseph, God has made me Lord of all Egypt. Come down unto me, tarry not. And thou shalt dwell in the land of Goshen, and thou shalt be near unto me, thou and thy children, and thy children's children, and thy flocks, and thy herds, and all that thou hast. And there I will nourish thee, for yet there are five years of famine, lest thou and thy household, and all that thou hast, come to poverty. And behold, your eyes see, and the eyes of your brother Benjamin, that it is my mouth that speaks to you. And you shall tell my father of all my glory in Egypt and of all that you have seen, and you shall haste and bring down my father hither. 
And he fell upon his brother Benjamin's neck and wept, and Benjamin wept upon his neck. And he kissed all his brothers, and... and uh, now, we'll speed ahead here. Uh, Joseph gives them everything for their journey. And then, uh, and we're still in chapter 45. And they, when they came up, in verse 25, And when they came up out of Egypt and came into the land of Canaan unto Jacob their father, and told him, saying, Joseph is yet alive, and he is the governor over all the land of Egypt. And Jacob's heart fainted, for he believed them not. He didn't believe it. He, he, he still believed Joseph's dead. And they told him all the words of Joseph, which he had said to them. And when he saw the wagons, which Joseph had sent to carry him, the spirit of Jacob their father revived. And Israel said, you see, so now his spirit is revived again because Joseph's alive. Now he's Israel. And Israel said, it is enough. Joseph, my son, is yet alive. I will go and see him before I die. And Israel took his journey with all that he had and came to Beersheba and offered sacrifices unto the God of his father Isaac. Um, I mentioned this in the last video um, that uh, his father, his grandfather Abraham had gone into Egypt and it was a bit of a screw up because um, he said his wife was his sister and it caused a plague in Egypt because the Pharaoh was going after Abraham's wife and this was found out and Abraham was asked to leave Egypt. And it was like an embarrassment. And later on, when Abraham died, his son Isaac went on a journey retracing the steps of Abraham and redigging the wells that Abraham had dug that were now filled back in with sand. And uh, But God appeared to Isaac and told him, don't go to Egypt. So he retraced his father's life, but he didn't go to Egypt. That was the one thing his father did that he didn't follow after. So Jacob now is, or Israel now, is um, coming to Beersheba where, where his father Isaac lived most of his life and where his father Isaac had received this message from God, do not go into Egypt. So he stopped there to offer sacrifice to ask God, like, should I really go into Egypt or not? Okay, so this is Israel, right? Okay, so uh, Genesis chapter 46, start in verse 1. And Israel took his journey with all that he had and came to Beersheba and offered sacrifices unto the God of his father Isaac. And God spoke to Israel in the visions of the night, and said, Jacob, Jacob. And he said, Here am I. So why is God calling him Jacob? Because he's doubting. Now he's doubting, like, should I do this, or should I not do this? So you're being Jacob again, right? And he said, I am God, the God of thy father. Fear not to go down into Egypt. For there I will make thee a great nation. I will go down with thee into Egypt, and I will also surely bring thee up again. And Joseph shall put his hand upon thy eyes. And Jacob rose up from Beersheba, and the sons of Israel carried Jacob their father and their little ones and their wives in the wagons which Pharaoh had sent to carry him. And they took their cattle and their goods and which they had gotten in the land of Canaan and came to Egypt. Jacob and all his seed with him. So now he's Jacob and his sons are the sons of Israel. Um, I guess he still maybe has a bit of fear about all of this. Because when he's in fear, he's Jacob. His sons and his sons' sons with him. His daughters and his sons' daughters and all his seed brought he with him into Egypt. And then they go through all the names of the 
sons and daughters. Okay, now I'll start off in Genesis chapter 46 at the end of the family tree part, um, verse 26. And all the souls that came with Jacob into Egypt, with ca which came out of his loins, besides Jacob's sons' wives, and all the skull, and all, and all the souls were threescore and six. So that's sixty-six. And the sons of Joseph, which were born him in Egypt, were two souls. All the souls of the house of Jacob, which came into Egypt were three score and ten. That's seventy. That's the entire family, inc including Joseph's sons. And he sent Judah before him unto Joseph to direct his face unto Goshen. And they came into the land of Goshen. And Joseph made ready his chariot and went up to meet Israel his father to Goshen. So he had heard the story about Israel. He knew his new name was Israel. And he presented himself to him. And he fell on his neck and wept on his neck a good while. And Israel said to Joseph, So now his fear's gone. He's Israel now. And Israel said to his son Joseph, Now let me die, since I have seen thy face, because thou art yet alive. And Joseph said to his brothers and unto his father's house, I will go up and show Pharaoh and say to him, My brothers and my father's house, which were in the land of Canaan, are come to me. And the men are shepherds, for their trade has been to feed cattle. And they have brought their flocks and their herds and all that they have. And it shall come to pass, when Pharaoh shall call you and shall say, What is your occupation? That you shall say, Thy servant's trade has been about cattle from our youth, even till now, both we and our fathers, that you may dwell in the land of Goshen, for every shepherd is an abomination unto the Egyptians. So the Egyptians didn't like sheep, but they liked cattle. So uh, Joseph is telling them, tell them that you've been raising cattle from your youth. Because they did raise cows too, but their main thing was sheep. But the Egyptians hate sheep, so tell them you raise cows. Then Joseph came and told Pharaoh and said, this is starting in verse, starting in verse, uh, now starting in chapter 47, verse 1. Then Joseph came and told Pharaoh and said, My father and my brothers and their flocks and their herds and all they have are come out of the land of Canaan, and behold, they are in the land of Goshen. And he took some of his brothers, even five men, and presented them to Pharaoh. And, Pharaoh's, and Pharaoh said unto his brethren, What is your occupation? And they said unto Pharaoh, Thy servants are shepherds, both we and also our fathers. And they said moreover unto Pharaoh, For to sojourn in the land we are come, for thy servants have no pasture for their flocks, for the famine is sore in the land of Canaan. Now therefore we pray thee, let thy servants dwell in the land of Goshen. And Pharaoh spoke to Joseph, saying, Thy father and thy brothers are come to thee. The land of Egypt is before thee, and the best of the land make thy father and brother to dwell. In the land of Goshen let them dwell. If thou knows any men of activity among them, let them make them rulers over my cattle. So the Pharaoh was fine with it because he had always been so grateful to Joseph for over saving Egypt previously with the corn and, and the granaries and all that. So Joseph brought in Jacob his father and set him before Pharaoh. And Jacob blessed Pharaoh. So now Jacob is in fear again or something. He's, he's Jacob again. And Pharaoh said to Jacob, How old are you? And Jacob said to Pharaoh, The days of the years of my pilgrimage are a hundred and thirty years. Few and evil have the days of the years of my life been, and have not attained unto the days of the years of the life of my fathers in the days of their pilgrimage. So they, Jacob is feeling 
pretty beat up by his whole life. He, he's, he was in sorrow and in pain for years over his son Joseph. And I guess a lot of people have experienced that where, where when you are mourning for many years or you're um, in some situation for many years and then when the situation's over, now, now all of a sudden you're looking back at it and you feel a bit worn out by it all and a bit tired. Um, because you never really thought about that while you were in it. So now he, he seems to be at that stage of, you know, it's just, I've just had a long shitty life and, but not even as long as my father's, but I'm tired. And Jacob blessed Pharaoh and went out from before Pharaoh. And Joseph placed his father and his brothers and gave them a possession in the land of Egypt, in the best land in the land of Ramses, as Pharaoh had commanded. And Joseph nourished his father and his brothers and all his father's household with bread, according to their families. And then uh, it goes on about Joseph dealing with uh, Egypt some more in the famine. So Joseph made it a, a dealt with the priests and the people of Egypt, and now in chapter 47 verse 27 and Israel dwelt in the land of Egypt in the country of Goshen and they had possessions therein and grew and multiplied exceedingly and Jacob lived in the land of Egypt 17 years so the whole age of Jacob was 147 years so now it goes through Israel and Jacob um, I guess it's talking about the life of Jacob and, and he's coming up to his death, his old age. Uh, where with Israel, it just talks about Israel prospering in the land of Egypt. And the time drew nigh that Israel must die. Oh, okay. So now Israel is going to go through death. Okay. So he called his son Joseph and said to him, If now I have found grace in your sight, put, I pray thee, thy hand under my thigh, and deal kindly and truly with me. Bury me not, I pray thee, in Egypt. But I will lie with my fathers, and thou shalt carry me. So now, see, he's planning for after his death. Um, what to do with the body, and, and um, he's looking beyond his death. So this is why they're calling him Israel. He's, he's uh, taking charge of death. Okay. It came time, drew nigh, that Israel must die. Okay. He says, But I will lie with my fathers, and thou shalt carry me out of Egypt, and bury me in their burying place. And he said, I will do as thou hast said. And he said, Swear unto me. And he swore to him. And Israel bowed himself upon the bed's head. Okay, so Israel secured um, a plan for a pa after his death. So this is not a fear. This, this is not a fear of death. This is a planning after, a planning for the inevitable. Okay, and it came to, now Genesis chapter 48, and it came to pass, this is later on, J uh, Joseph went home. It came to pass after these things that one told Joseph, Behold, thy father is sick. And he took with him his two sons, Manasseh and Ephraim. And one told Jacob and said, Behold, thy son Joseph comes to thee, and Israel strengthened himself and sat upon the bed. So Joseph, so Jacob was dying. And I guess he's feeling down. And the one said, your son Joseph's coming. Now all of a sudden he's Israel and he strengthens himself and sits up and gets ready to meet Israel for the last time probably. Now, I'm going to cut it off here because this gets into a whole new study. The one chapter 
of Genesis chapter 48. And um, <clears throat> this is where uh, Israel blesses uh, the sons of Joseph. And then in chapter 49, where he blesses the, his uh, 12 sons. And then he is buried. So, um, so I'm going to save this for uh, the next episode. Because we're going to do the blessings of Jacob and Israel. Because um, this is a, 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 a topic that you're going to find a lot of information on the internet about it. There's a lot of Bible studies over these last these two chapters in Genesis, these blessings. So we're going to cover it in a bit of detail now. Um, now that we've looked at <clears throat> all the other stuff, we, we know who Ephraim is, we know who Manasseh is. If you've been following the previous videos, there's a literally hours and hours of information on this. So that's why I did it that way, that now we can talk about it with some background and with some intelligence and with some context. And um, so I would strongly urge that, uh, I'll, t I'll talk about that in the next video, what, what videos really should be um, looked at before that. Uh, there's actually quite a bit. So anyway, thank you for listening and we will see you in the next video. And don't forget to like, share, and subscribe to help out with the channel and to keep things moving along. Well, thank you very much.